Who exactly was the Trade Federation? We were first introduced to a fleet of battleships in the Phantom Menace, blockading a peaceful planet in protest of the taxation of trade routes. This organization then became part of the Confederation of Independent Systems during the Clone Wars. Today, let's take a look at the origins and history of this shipping and trade conglomerate. 350 years before the Battle of Yavin, or BBY, the galaxy's merchants were in constant dispute with transportation megacorporations in the Outer Rim territories. The Republic chartered an organization to mediate these disputes, which became known as the Trade Federation. For the first hundred years or so, they helped alleviate these tensions, but slowly they developed into a shipping cartel themselves. Their members were provided better terms and rates, and the organization even ordered a fleet of freighters to serve their own shipping interests. By 250 BBY, they had abandoned their original design and were instead working to advance their own commercial interests within the Senate. Their goals were simple, gain access to thousands of backwater systems, set up all the shipping and trade infrastructure, then fix all the pricing to their benefit and intimidate everyone to play along. They even created the Trade Explorer Corps, which was nothing more than their hyperspace navigational route division, and provided them with faster routes through hyperspace no one else had access to. As they began to achieve these goals, they quickly found themselves dependent on local planetary security forces to protect their cargo and ships from pirates and shipjackers. Most of the time, these forces were controlled by dishonest planetary officials. So the Federation used their influence in the Senate and created their own privatized military force, which they named the Trade Defense Forces. They soon gained a reputation as the ideal Republic organization. They made investments for the good of the galaxy, supported local defense forces in the Outer Rim, and were governed by a variety of species who fairly represented their members on Coruscant. But behind the scenes, it was now a ruthless shipping cartel, having become the very thing it was intended to stop. The Senate wanted to stimulate legitimate commerce in the mid and outer rims. So in 124 BBY, they created free trade zones, which were areas where trade could be conducted without government taxation. Instead of achieving the Senate's goals of reducing widespread crime and political isolation in these regions, it merely served as a sizable incentive for megacorporations, like the Intergalactic Banking Clan and Corporate Alliance. The Trade Federation, however, reaped the greatest rewards as they took advantage of loopholes in the legislation that allowed them to oppress their competition and require agreements with their trade defense force. At this time, new guidelines were also introduced to provide guilds and megacorporations representation in the Galactic Senate. The Trade Federation no longer needed to lobby senators, they were provided a full voice in the Senate itself. And within just a couple of generations, they had enough sway in the Senate to impede rivals, sway judges, and block any legislation they disagreed with. The Federation started passing laws governing trade routes as well as abusing their power to extort protection fees from neighboring systems. In addition, they passed oppressive regulations and enacted excessive tolls on independent traders. This began a power struggle between the Federation and the Republic. It was in 46 BBY the Trade Federation began to produce its own army, mostly due to the Stark Hyperspace War. Factionalism within the Republic became a greater danger than the usual pirates, raiders, and terrorists who tried to hijack shipments. The Trade Federation, however, had acquired a secret new supporter, the Sith Lord Darth Sidious. His clout in the Republic bureaucracy enabled them to increase their public and covert military buildup, as well as enact more aggressive Senate resolutions. They were enticed to follow his orders by his promises of wealth and power. And by this time, the Trade Federation had helped many senators, lobbyists, and business owners prosper financially, and they were now determined to control the free trade zones. In 33 BBY, Supreme Chancellor Valorum worked with Senator Palpatine of Naboo to convince the Senate to abolish the free trade zones in an effort to remove some of the Trade Federation's political influence. As a goodwill gesture, the Chancellor increased their military allotment, unaware that they were already amassing a droid army. This created an alliance between the Trade Federation, Techno Union, Intergalactic Banking Clan, and Corporate Alliance, as they would all be impacted by the reinstatement of taxes. Tensions were high, so the Chancellor set up a trade summit on Ariadu, 
where a radical political group known as the Nebula Front saw it as an opportunity to assassinate the directorate of the Trade Federation. This left a power vacuum in the organization, and the Nemoidians took control, appointing Newt Gunray as the new viceroy. The assassinations, combined with Sidious's prompting, compelled them to, again, ramp up military production and increase their warships and droid armies. The following year, the Galactic Senate approved Prop 31-814-D, which allowed taxation of the free trade zones. The Federation wanted to both protest this resolution and bring attention to their own taxation proposal, so they blockaded the planet Naboo, as Senator Palpatine was the one who had spearheaded this resolution. They were unconcerned about the Republic taking action against them in retaliation because for centuries they had only received favoritism, and they understood how dependent the galaxy was on the goods and services they provided to its citizens. These events are what sparked the Separatist movement that would become the Clone Wars a decade later. And that's how the Trade Federation monopolized trade throughout the Rim Worlds, and became so powerful inside the Galactic Senate. But what do you think about this? If you would like to watch some more Star Wars content, check out this video here. As always, thank you for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and may the Force be with you.